Thank you so much for taking a couple of minutes to join me on this presentation, on this webinar. I hope to impart to you the value of testing on your website, show you some examples of how we've been able to double sales without increasing traffic. This is an almost guaranteed way to easily grow your business by 15% every year. And in this presentation, I'm going to run you through some things that work, also things that don't work, and ways that you can implement testing into your business. And because we are going to spend a bit of time together, I wanted to take just a minute at the beginning of the presentation here to talk to you a little bit about my journey so that you understand you are hearing from someone who has a knowledge base and an experience base, not just somebody who started doing this yesterday. I built pages for clubs for the university I went to. So I built a page for the German club and I built a page for the radio station I worked at. And then I got this crazy idea. I'll start my own website. Now this is the first website I started. And I wanted to show this to you because you can see this rainbow on striveforimpact.com. Now I didn't understand at the time that a rainbow actually represented the LGBT community. I just understood rainbows were colorful and they were pretty. And I didn't understand the way I was coming across on the web had a value or had an impact. You can see at the bottom of this presentation down here uh, on the bottom left, these are posts from October 21st, 2002 and November 14th of 2002 and January 21st of 2003. This kind of looks like a blog. Well, blogs didn't really get going on the internet in a big way until 2005. I never even heard of blogging until late 2003. But I was already blogging and keeping track of the changes I was making to my website back in 2001, 2002. This is me, Jonathan Kraft. Grew up in Colorado and have spent a lot of time traveling around the world. Went from the humble beginnings of this first website to having over 50 websites, over 130 domain names, and I was primarily an affiliate marketer. What that means is I would sell everyone else's products and services. I had worked in customer service and worked as a campus caterer, and I did not want to have my own customers. I was afraid of of customer service, customer support. The day somebody calls you up and you can't do anything to fix their problem, no matter what you do, they're just not going to be happy. I had dealt with that kind of person, had that experience, and really wanted to serve people, but I also just didn't want to deal with that kind of thing on a daily basis. What this meant was basically I was afraid to have my own customers, and I went on to help sell over $100 million worth of other people's products. I sold legal services. I sold green products, how to build your own solar cooker, how to call Germany. Some of the earliest pages I had was like how to call other countries and... I sold calling cards and calling plans and telecom. As a result of all of this promotion of other people's products and services, I got to travel a lot. My wife and I have been to almost 50 countries. I speak Spanish. I got to learn Spanish in Ecuador. I speak German. but got to learn that in Germany. One of the things I've really learned is that building a great life, for me anyway, and for Carrie, my wife, is about being willing and able to go to the places where other people are and this, is, this has a relevance to testing because it's part of who I am. It's part of my DNA. I go to meet other people where they are. And as a result, I build, build really great relationships with people. I'm able to bring them to where I am or where I would like them to be. I mean, we all have goals in our relationships with other people. And I'm willing to go pretty far to meet someone else where they are. As part of that, then I found that they are willing to meet me where I am. It's been a huge value for my life. I've been to just under 50 countries. My wife and I got to spend two years traveling all around the world between 2009 and 2011. That's us in Buenos Aires, Argentina. This is us in Mexico in 2008, actually. This is us at Oktoberfest with our friends Anya on the left and Anna on the right. This is us at a church that's actually carved out of a rock in Finland. This is us in India at the Taj Mahal. This is us with our friends Banu and Kirti uh, in Hyderabad, India. We actually got to go to an Indian wedding. This is us in Paris, France. We were actually there visiting our friend Anna, who you saw in the earlier picture from Oktoberfest. This is us at the Love Wall in Paris. And we've just gotten to do some amazing things. Not not really to impress you at all. Because if you're taking that, oh, those guys just blah, 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 blowing smoke. No, I, I tell you this to tell you that I got a little overconfident. I got a little, I don't know about egotistical, but I definitely got overconfident. And during 2009 to 2011, the world changed. And I have this bouncing picture of a cell phone on here because I had a cell phone in 2001. Everyone 
had cell phones back then, but I had a smartphone. And a smartphone in 2001 it was about as big as the phones we all use today, except that all of my friends made fun of me for having my email on my phone. Why would that be important, have your email on your phone? That's ridiculous. Well, while Carrie and I were traveling between 2009 and 2011, the smartphone got really introduced and really big, and today it accounts for about 55 to 60 percent of traffic on the internet. Really important when it comes to testing. We'll get to that in a minute. But during those years, because of changes in how technology was being presented on different devices, 2009 through 2011, very important years in the evolution of people surfing the web on their phones. None of our websites were mobile friendly. Most of our traffic was coming from methods that Google later deemed a little outdated. They wanted these authority type pages on the internet and we were doing affiliate marketing which was basically trying to help people make good decisions about what to purchase but not actually having a customer base and not actually having a customer list. And during 2009 through 2011 and especially by 2012 we had lost our business. 90 to 95 percent of the traffic fell off and losing a business didn't just mean losing a business. It meant losing a way of life. I had identified myself as this really strong affiliate marketer. I could promote anybody's products online and be really successful, but that changed and the rules changed. One of my goals in wanting to help business owners to really succeed is to not have that happen to them. Because I know that losing a business does not just mean losing a business. It means losing an identity. And it took me it took me three years to get back to a place where I felt really good about myself. I reapplied some of the skills that I had learned back in 2006, 2007 as an affiliate marketer, as someone helping other people with their businesses. I learned about website testing back in 2006. And I started doing testing on websites in 2006. I still have some case studies that I'm going to show you from some of those early tests that we did back in 2006, 2007. Part of my background is that I have a degree in human communication. What my degree taught me and what travel taught me and what learning foreign language taught me is that we often don't know. The things that we think we know, we don't know. This is true in all aspects of life. But when it comes to business and when it comes to marketing, we often make this mistake of thinking that we know. We create our customer avatar. We say, hey, I know who my customer is. I know how to present information to them. We often just don't know. We think we do. We think we've done all the research to make it work, to make it really successful. And we make this assumption that we know, but we don't know. We don't know what's driving other people. We don't know what's motivating other people. And so testing becomes really, really important. So if you've never had an experience with website testing, I'd like to talk to you today about what website testing is, why it's important, and give you just a basic primer on it. Website testing is, let's just say you said, okay, I don't know what colors I should use for my website. I think I should use red, or no, I think I should use blue, right? We're having a Monty Python mo moment. The answer is, I don't know, and you don't know, and we won't know. We'll assume we know, but maybe if we assume we know, we're wrong. So what if instead we said, okay, let's, let's find a way to actually know. And we send visitor 1 to the blue page, and we send visitor 2 to the red page, visitor 2, 3 to the blue page, visitor 4 to the red page, visitor 5 to the blue page, visitor 6 to the red, I guess it's kind of pink, visitor 6 to the pink, visitor 7 blue, visitor 8 pink, visitor 9 blue, visitor 10 red or pink, whatever you want to say, visitor 11 to blue, and visitor 12 to this red or pink page. Over time, if we kept doing that over 10,000 visitors, we would know for sure, if we were able to track it, which one of these versions was going to perform better? And you would be shocked at what kind of results you can get from actually testing. Remember, just a bit ago, I told you I would show you a test from 2006 that we did. This is the Fountain of Youth World Summit. Now, you can look at these two pages. So, Visitor 1 saw the page on the left. Visitor 2 saw the page on the right. Visitor 3 saw the page on the left. Visitor 4 saw the page on the right. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. What did we change on these two pages? Well, we said, thank you, you will receive an email in 15 minutes. Thank you, you will receive an email shortly. Please read below for more instructions. Then we put this yellow box around this. No yellow box over here. We pretty much used the same headline on these two. And then we changed this. This is basically the same text as this. But we changed it to paragraph format versus just making it a couple of sentences over here. Now you can look at these two and say, which one would result in more sales? Now I want to give you just a little bit of background on these pages. This was after they opted in. They were opting into a free summit. So they put in their name and email. They were getting free access to the summit. And then on the thank you page, which is what this is, the thank you page, we said, but wait, you'll never see this offer again. Make sure you read this. 
So when we ran this page, here's the result that we got. Now this is old school graphics from 2006. This is the early result that we had really early on. We went on to run this for a little while longer. We ran this with 98 visitors on one side and 97 visitors on the other side. The option with the yellow box is the one at the top. The option without the yellow box is the one at the bottom. Now you would think, okay, well, yeah, that makes sense. The one with the yellow box got their attention more. But it didn't just get their attention more. It actually resulted in them choosing a higher priced product. We were getting $2.76 per click, but by testing we got $9.96 per click. We went on to run this for two days because this was a big launch event. We were only sending traffic at this page for about a week. We went on to run this though, and what we found out is that the page with the yellow box had a three and a half times increase in revenue, $8,000 more when we called it. This event went on to do over half a million dollars. Had we not done this testing, it's possible this event would have done $150,000. I hope that's something that you can see is valuable. Here's an example that we ran a simple headline test. All this is is a headline test. The only thing we changed is this headline. On the page on the left, you see having difficulty finding a three-quarter mattress size. On the right, we see where can I find a three-quarter mattress size? Now, we weren't sending a ton of traffic to this page, so we had to run it for a while. That's part of testing methodology. You have to run a test for a while, sometimes, but you don't know unless you're using the right software and talking with the right people to help you do your testing. But if you look at these two headlines, you can make a decision. Which one do you think would perform best? Having difficulty finding or where can I find? We had to run this test over four months, 135 days. We're using a testing tool, by the way, here called Optimizely. Here in this page, we're running this for 135 days, a little over four months, four and a half months. During that time, the page that says where can I find outperformed the other page, got people to the cart 11.6% more often, got people to the checkout 24.7% more often, got people to the order conversion page, to the thank you page after they made the purchase, 60% more, leading to a total revenue increase of 61.8%. Now those numbers are just percentages, whatever, doesn't mean that much, doesn't make that much difference, right? But you can see we can run graphs and we can see the difference between these two. Well, how many people actually converted over those four months? We had 26 conversions on one side and 42 conversions on the other side. And it was actually getting bigger as time went on between the one version and the new version that we were testing. Just to show you an idea of revenue, what did this mean in terms of money over four months? Well, the day after I actually took this screenshot, this ended up being over $14,000. So we'll just call it $6,000 difference. So $6,000 difference over four months. If you could get an increase of $6,000 difference from one page on your website over four months, that would be $18,000 a year, a relatively low trafficked page. $18,000 a year. What would $18,000 a year mean to you just from one test? What would $18,000 a year mean for your business if you were able to increase revenue from one page on your website by testing one headline $18,000 a year, could that be a new piece of equipment? Could that be another vacation that you might get to take? What would that mean for you? Here's another test we ran. This is a category page on a skincare website. Now we tested several versions of this page. They were getting a lot of traffic to all of their category pages. So we tested a bunch of things across the category page. But the version we started with just had a price and more info. The more info button took them to the product page from the category page. We tested a bunch of versions. We tested it with the more info, without the more info. We tested it with the price here, without the price here. But we tested it without the button effect. We just tested it with a flat sort of button with the add to cart. We tested it without the more info button. We did about three months, 90 days. Over that time, this was a crazy successful test. We had a 6% increase in overall sales on this website. 6% across the entire website. What did that mean? It meant $17,000 a month in increase. Now it took us 90 days to find the winner, but in 90 days we got to $17,000 more additional profit, not additional traffic. We didn't send additional people to this page, but we got $17,000 a month in increase. What's that $200,000 a year? What would your business do with an extra $200,000 this year? Back to the mattress company. I have a lot of testing that we did with the mattress company. If you look at these two pages, what's different? 
from this page to this page, from the left to the right. What's different between these two pages? Well, if you look down at the bottom right-hand corner, you can see we put the McAfee Secure logo on the one page on the right. Now, we tested this throughout the website, so we didn't have to test it for very long. But adding that, I didn't want this test to work, by the way. We're all influenced by things that we don't understand we're influenced by. We don't know that we're being influenced by them, but we are. Little things that happen every day influence us. By adding this McAfee Secure logo throughout all of the pages of the website, we increased sales by $2,900 a month. $35,000, $36,000 for the year. What would your business do with an extra $36,000 this year? So we thought, okay, let's run a second version of this. McAfee costs the business about $3,000 a year. Having the Better Business Bureau doesn't cost that much. Doesn't cost as much as about $500 a year, but this business subscribes to both services. Subscribes to having McAfee secure and scanning the website and subscribes to the Better Business Bureau. So we thought, well, if we could just use the Better Business Bureau logo, we could get rid of the McAfee secure logo and we could be sure that we were going to perform at the same rate. What we found out, though, by testing over about a month is that we actually had a decrease in overall sales, still an increase from not having anything at all, but it was a decrease in overall sales to go with the Better Business Bureau versus McAfee as a little trust symbol on the website. So we stuck with McAfee. It ended up being worth the $2,500 to $3,000 a year that the business pays for McAfee because it paid for itself in a month. I'm not advocating McAfee one way or another. What I am advocating is testing because you don't know what works on one website may not work on another. And I'm going to talk about that in just a minute. What we found with this website is if people interacted with the search function on the website, so a little search box at the top of the page, if they interacted with the search function, they were six times more likely to make a purchase. Six times more likely to make a purchase. So what we did was said as they scroll down the page, let's make the search box go with them and let's test some different text in here. What are you looking for today? We tested different versions of this in here as well during this testing. This was amazing though because what we found was that from the beginning, adding this sticky search bar, and we didn't have to run this very long because this site has a lot of traffic, but adding this sticky search bar, you can see it just consistently has more people actually clicking inside of the product grid. So what was the product grid? It's here. By adding this box scrolling down the page, even when people didn't interact with it, they were much more likely to click inside of the product grid, an improvement of about 3%, consistent throughout the experiment. We also found that a lot more people used the search. We actually increased the number of people using the search by 6%. So we called this after a week. This was a successful winner. And I'm not going to show you the revenue for this one because they didn't want me to because it's crazy. They were willing to let me show you this. And the interesting thing about looking at this is you can learn so much from testing. You know, it can be strictly saying, hey, look, let's get the revenue up. And that's really my goal is to help you get your revenue up. But you can also learn what's motivating your visitors, what's motivating people on your website. Did they want to search? Did they want to click within the product grid? If we change the, the way the product grid displays, if we have two columns instead of three, if we have four columns instead of two, what could we do on those pages to actually get more people to click through, to get to the product, to get to the information? By doing so, you can learn a ton about what your visitors actually want and also what you're doing to make them angry. Because chances are good you're making your, some of your visitors angry just by changing the color on the website or not making it the right size or a hundred different things. And you won't know unless you test. All right, let's talk about mobile testing. Here's an example of a test we ran on a mobile version. Now, you can run tests if you set things up properly. You can run tests that only your mobile visitors see. So we ran a test and said, let's put a button on here. We've got an add to cart button, but let's put a button that says call to order. Now on this page, you can see there's a place up here up top that says tap to call, tap to call up top. And then there's also a place down below call to order. Now we tracked both of these. We tracked the tap to call at the top, tracked the call to order at the bottom. Why would we want to do that? We want to make sure that we weren't just stealing people who would normally call here and making them call here. We wanted to find out are additional people calling because this business has a really high success rate when people call in. It's like 37% of the people who call in actually make a purchase. So they wanted to increase the number of people calling in. Here's what happened out of this test. In the direct conversion for people buying over their phones, we ran this for quite a while. We had to have a lot of visitors in this to find out. So we ran this for about 45 days. 
During those 45 days, we had about a 3.6% improvement. That's not that big of a difference between these two. What we found out, you know, it's a small increase in the number of people making a purchase on their phone. Not that much difference in terms of the revenue. You know, 20,803 versus 20,824, easily overcome by one sale. But what we wanted to track is by adding this button lower on the page, are we preventing people or making people less likely to tap at the top of the page to make a call? And what we found out is, at the top of the page, the call link in the header, no, we didn't really decrease the number of people calling from uh, the higher button on the page. But what we did do, because no calls were being made from that lower button on the page before because it didn't exist, we increased the number of calls. 36 more calls came in during the time that this test was run. 36 more calls. For a business that has about a 37% close ratio, what does that mean? It means that adding this button to the page meant about 11 or 12 more orders came in just by adding that silly little button, that call to order button, down below the add to cart button. They made about 12 more sales over the 45 days that that test was run. 12 more sales for that business equates to about $2,000 in profit additional for the month. Now here's what's interesting. You say, well, great, okay, I'm going to add a call to order button on all of my mobile pages just to make sure that that, that, that happens and that people are calling in. And, but what works on one site may not work on another. So here's a completely different website where we were testing the same thing. We said we want to add the add to cart button and we want to add a call to order button. But for this website, it didn't work. It actually decreased the number of people buying from their phones. So they actually dropped sales by almost 10% just by adding that button. Their web sales over people's phones, which actually led to about an $8,000 decrease in sales. And their phone team is not as good. So they were not actually getting the calls that they were getting. They were getting fewer calls, but the calls that they were getting, they weren't converting. So this actually ended up being a loser for this website. Loser. We'll talk about losing experiments shortly. But this actually ended up being a loser experiment for this website when for the other website it was a winning experiment. And the interesting thing about that is that you just need to test to find out what's going to work on your website. So here's a test that we thought this is unsuccessful. Well, this site redesigned. Back to these mattress guys. They thought, okay, well, we redesigned our website, but we forgot to put in this little thing that said, here's your retail price and here's how much you save. On a previous version of the website, they were showing this and they thought for sure adding the retail price back in and adding the you save would increase conversions because customers want to see how much they're saving, right? But we thought, let's test it. We're going to put this on all the pages, and then we're going to hide it. We're going to put it on, and then 50% of visitors, it's going to be hidden for those visitors. If you consider it to be a losing test, it's not really a losing test, because usually a losing test is something that you're actually saving yourself from doing. So you think you know, you think you're like, hey, this is going to help convert more visitors to buyers. This is going to help convert more visitors to subscribers, so I'm going to do it. Well, why not test it and find out so that you can save yourself from doing something that might actually negatively impact your business? Here's the result of this experiment. Over about 24,000 visitors, we found out that hiding the retail price and savings was actually better. 12% more people got to the cart page. 6% more people got to the checkout page. And here's what happened in terms of the actual people converting to sales. 304 sales versus 291 sales over that same time period, about a 7% improvement. And once it crossed this line, it never went back. It maintained consistency, meaning that we saved ourselves from losing about 7% of our sales just by testing it. So there's no such thing really as a losing experiment if you're testing. Depending on how much traffic you're getting, depending on what pages you're testing on, you don't have to test that long to find out whether the thing you think you know about your audience is true. And sometimes you find, yes, I'm such a genius. <laughs> I knew I knew that was going to work. And other times you think, man, I'm not that smart. <laughs> like, I messed up. That was not a good idea. But I'm glad I tested so that I know that it wasn't a good idea. Just to give you an idea of the difference in a dollar volume over the course of this test, uh, this was run from what, April 19th through May, 9th, May 23rd, so about a month. In a month's time, this was a $3,000 difference. If your business had a $3,000 difference over a month, that would be about $36,000 a year. And this business has about a 27% profit margin. That means that out of $36,000, they take home about $10,000 more as a result of saving themselves from doing something they thought they should do. 
what would it mean to you to save yourself about ten thousand dollars from one test that you might run on your website I could keep boring you all day with examples of case studies of things that we've tested things that have been successful and things that have been saves but what I'd like to do out of this presentation I want to give you some things you can take away from this time that you've spent with me I want to have you write these things down so if you fill, fill out your checklist, here's the things that you should know that you should do. Here's some tips for a testing framework. You need to test over time. Why? The longer you leave a test running, the more conclusive that test becomes because you get more people coming through the experiment. You'll know visitor one liked this, visitor two liked that, visitor three liked this, visitor four liked that. And over time, you'll learn, but you have to run it for a long enough period of time. And a lot of times in your testing software, if you use testing software, you'll find out that you didn't run your experiment long enough. And having someone help you to analyze the results is actually a really good thing. So even if it's not me that helps you analyze your testing results, it's really helpful to have someone else analyze with you. I'd recommend absolutely testing on different platforms. What someone does on mobile is entirely different than what someone does on their desktop. The behaviors, the actions. So you have to have a way or a software or a system that lets you test a different version on your mobile version versus your desktop version. Obviously, I'm happy to help you do that, but if you are looking for doing this on your own, I highly recommend you go find some software that lets you test versions differently depending on what experience your user is having on which device that they're on. Don't get caught in the same mistake that I got caught in by not looking at different visitors differently. A person on their mobile phone is different than a person on their desktop or their tablet. You also want to be able to look at different sources of traffic. So your Facebook traffic coming into your website is going to be different than your search traffic. What if you could run an experiment that was different for people that were returning to your website versus people who had never been there before? First-time visitors do different things than visitors who are returning. Facebook visitors do different things on your website than people coming from Google. I would recommend being able to see the results at least of different sources, but if you are only reporting the differences, it might also be good to have a testing software or a testing person or a testing system in place that lets you test different sources depending on where that traffic is coming from, lets you run different experiments. Here's something really important to keep in mind. 30, 50, 20. Only 30% 30 of your experiments are going to win. 50% of your tests will not give you a direct profit result or a direct more subscribers result. 50% will not give you that. 20% of your tests will be things you think are going to win that are actually you saving yourself from yourself. So for the 30% of experiments that are winners, in order to get to that 30%, that are winners, I highly recommend, highly recommend you do more testing. The other side of that is that you can't test too many things at the same time if you don't have enough traffic to do it. So the 30% of experiments that are winners are going to be about 50-50 in terms of revenue versus information. Let's talk about neutral tests. Things you just learn something from that you don't necessarily have an increased subscriber base or an increased profit. But you're kind of like mining for diamonds, right? If you're looking for diamonds, you don't go looking for a diamond, you go looking for coal because diamonds exist inside of coal unless you're making diamonds but I mean this is kind of a process of making diamonds you're going to take some raw material some idea some thought that you have about something that might be good something that doesn't look like much to begin with and you're gonna convert it into something that looks like a little more you're gonna learn a little bit from that experiment and over time you run follow-up tests based on your previous tests well does it work in the fall does it work in the spring does it work only at nighttime does it work with Facebook visitors only does it work with visitors from Google exclusively and you're gonna find some diamonds that you can code into your website but you don't need to code things to begin with until you've really tested them and you need someone that can not only help you test things but then once you find a winner man code that into your page as fast as possible so that you can move on to the next test and have something that's already working on your website to increase conversions 20% of your tests, you're going to save yourself from yourself if you run tests. You're going to prevent yourself from doing damage. Sometimes people just implement things on their website. They go, oh yeah, we're going to put this into play. And then they find out, oh man, that dropped our conversion. But we thought it was so pretty. Our website looked so much better. But your visitors didn't think so. They might have liked it better, but it might mean that they actually buy less. If you've ever been in that experience of, well, the visitors say they like our site better, but they're buying less, you probably should have tested there are other times in your business you might have to make a change um, upper management may say hey you know we need to put this on the website you could test it 
get permission to test decisions like that for the first 30 days, unless it absolutely has to be put on the website, test it for 30 days and see what actually happens. Maybe there's a third option, you know, well, we have to put this on the website. Well, we can't put it on the website because it's going to decrease sales. Well, let's test putting it on the website versus not. Now we've got the evidence to say, yes, it does decrease sales. So let's find a third option of how to get it on the website without decreasing sales. But if you don't test, you won't know. There are also things, other tools that you use. I know with Shopify, if you're using a Shopify store, there's all these third-party things that you put on this, the site. People who bought this also bought that. It's a product recommendation engine. And maybe it costs, you know, some of these product recommendation engines will cost $5,000 to $10,000 a month. You're spending for this software and you don't even know for sure that it's working. You're just taking their word for it. What if you had a testing process and a methodology in place so that you would know whether or not what you were spending was worthwhile? You got to think about what it's costing you to not be doing testing on a regular basis with a regular methodology. From my own experience of having lost a business, lost a way of life, lost a perspective, lost an identity, I don't want to see that happen to other people. And our team that I work with have 35 plus years of combined experience in various aspects of testing, web design, coding. It's not just me, it's my team that I work with to bring to you the very best value that I can. What I really want to do is help you discover where your business is leaking money and plug the holes. People come in through your door, you're probably doing something they don't like. It's like in a retail situation, somebody walks in, and they're like, oh, the red paint in here is really hurting my eyes. You don't get that experience when you're not having a physical retail store. But people are having that experience on your website. You could probably easily fix it if you knew what the problem was. Testing will help you discover what you need to fix. And it's probably some subliminal thing that we're all affected by, but we don't even know that that's happening. Businesses pay a lot of money for traffic. Google AdWords, you know, I, I know several people who are paying in excess of $5,000 a month and some who are paying in excess of $20,000 a month for Google AdWords alone not including Facebook traffic, not including all the other methods that you can be running online for ads, but why not convert those visitors into buyers? Why not find a way to test specifically for the traffic that you're bringing in from those ads? Find out what works for the ads that you're spending the most for. There are things that we can do to help keep people on your site longer. This helps your value in Google to go up because as people stay on your site longer, Google thinks, oh, well, yeah, this person is actually staying on that site. They must be finding what they're looking for. We can help them stay on your site longer through testing. A really valuable thing that I hope you take away from this presentation is that what works on someone else's site might not work on your site. Put together some testing to find out if what you've heard works on other people's websites actually works on yours. Don't just implement it. Don't just put it into play. And I would be happy to help you do that. The other thing I really want you to remember is 20%. So one out of every five ideas that you have for something to do on your website is going to decrease sales. You might disagree with me on that. You might think, oh, I'm smart. I wouldn't do something that would decrease sales on my website. Test it. Find out. Our experience over 10 plus years, my own experience is about 20%, one-fifth of all the things that you do to your website will decrease sales right off the top. So test it and find out. So if you're going to work with me, here's what you're going to get. I am going to give you a complete site review for whatever you're currently doing, whatever project you're currently working on, projects you're working on. I will give you a complete site review. We'll give you 10 to 20 customized recommendations at the beginning, as well as a prioritization of how you should test those things. What should you test first? Should you test your order buttons first, or should you test your background color? Should you test things in your header, or should you be testing your Contact Us page? What should you be testing first? What should take a week? What should take a month? What should take several months? Analyzing your site's traffic and your site's history to find out what it is that is making your site successful and putting together a list of testing plans for the next six months to a year so that you'll know what to test. We're going to set up the code for your website, whether we're using Visual Website Optimizer or Google Optimize or Optimizely or any of the other testing softwares that are out there. We'll work with you to implement and code successful tests into your site, but also make sure that the code is on your page so that you don't have to implement things before you actually know that they're winners. We're going to have a weekly call of 30 minutes to an hour where we discuss the tests that we're currently running and show results for what's been successful and show results for the things we've saved. We're going to work on this every week. We're going to spend an hour or a half hour or whatever time you have available within that time structure to really get things working on your website and really keep improving your conversion rate over time. 
because it's not just a 5% win now. It's a 5% win that builds on a 5% win that builds on a 5% win. And over the course of a year, you can be doing easily 15% more. But we've had businesses that have done 200 and 300% more their first year of working with us. Finally, we're going to always be coming up with new testing ideas. We're going to help you ask the question, well, is it a good idea? And can we test it working with the systems and software that you already have in place? So what would all of this be worth? To do a complete site and business review, we charge 3500 bucks. To do 10 to 20 customized testable recommendations based on that site review, we charge $2,500. To set up a prioritization of what should be tested first and how you should be testing and what should be tested over a week or several months, how this fits into your other business goals, talking to you about what kinds of business goals you have in place, that would be $850. To set up code on your website and make sure that everything is working properly and running properly, we would charge $450 and then we would charge on an hourly to implement and code or work with your team, your existing web team, to code in the things that we find successful. To do a weekly call on a monthly basis, have four calls a month or five calls a month in some cases to discuss the current tests and develop new testing ideas and then show results for what we've implemented, we would charge $1,000 a month for that normally. So this is a $12,300 value you're getting because we're also going to include the testing software. So we're going to set up the testing software for you. Depending on which testing software we go with and the complexity of coding it, we would charge anywhere between $100 to $5,000 a month. But again, you're getting a $12,300 value at $49.95 a month. There is a 90-day commitment to this because it does sometimes take a little bit of time to find the right test. So I know this isn't going to be right for everyone. But we have a three-month commitment, so you have to commit to doing this for three months, but we'll give you a 90-day money-back guarantee. What that means is if you're dissatisfied at any point within the first 90 days, no one else in the testing community does this, by the way. No one else offers this kind of guarantee for this kind of service. They just don't offer it. We're going to give you a 90-day money-back guarantee. So if you're unhappy with the results you're getting, or if you can't continue, or you just need the money back, call me and we will give you a refund for any money you've spent with us. Now, I know this isn't right for everybody, and I mean it really isn't right for everybody. If you don't have a business that's already doing about $250,000 a year, then there's probably some other services we can offer you to help you get to that point, but you do have to qualify for this. And so what I would like to do is set up a 10-minute phone call with you just to go over what it is that you're currently doing in your business. We'll talk about this and work on it with you and find out if this is even a right fit for you at this point in your business. And if not, there might be some other services or I'm very well connected with people who can help get traffic to your pages. What I really am working to focus in and stay focused in is helping businesses to convert the traffic that they're already getting. And I just want you to think about if you're not doing some level of testing, there's lots of little free testing tools that you can use. I just want you to think about what it's costing you not to do this. If you're not doing any testing at all, please, please, please get started with testing. You will be blown away by what is possible with the exact same traffic that you currently have. Thank you so much for spending this time with me today. If you think I can be of service for you in any way on the testing side, please do reach out to me. Let's schedule a 10-minute phone call and let's get things moving forward for you on the testing front. Thank you so much. Again, my name is Jonathan Kraft. And I look forward to hearing from you and working with you to double, triple, or quadruple the profits you're getting from the traffic you're already getting to your website. And let's schedule a 10-minute phone call. Thank you so much.